Today is October 25th, 2009. I'm Christy Bronson, and I'm sitting with Lester Ingebrigtsen here at his home in Newport Coast, California. I'm Les's uh, daughter-in-law. Joe Bronson is my husband. Les, would you please tell us more about yourself, your parents, where you grew up, and what memories you have as a child? I covered a lot of territory, because at this age, I've lived a long time. How um, old are you right now? <clears throat> About 75, six. 76, okay. I grew up in Wausau, Wisconsin, a town of about 33,000 people. Um, it was a great place to grow up because it was just the right size town to have everything you need, and yet it was small enough that we had the run of the town. Oh, I could, okay. I could take my bicycle and go any place in town and be safe. There's no bad place in town to live. My, my dad uh, worked in the um, lumber business. He was a lumber scaler. He could look at a stack of pile of lumber and tell you how many square feet are in that pile. Wow. And he was, uh, and he looked different things for the wood factories, mostly box factories. My mother grew up in uh, Green Lake, Wisconsin, in Berlin, Wisconsin, which is about 100 miles away. I think my dad was working on a job for the uh, road construction at that time, and my mother was a waitress. That's, oh. how, that's how they met. And I know they kept saying he was going to get a new pair of bib overalls to get married in. Oh. Just think about it. So they didn't do that, of course. So, grew up in Wausau, Wisconsin. Uh, graduated from Wausau High School at the age of about uh, 18. Uh, the draft was in force, so I had okay. to go into the uh, military. It was either wait for the Army to take me or make my own selection. Okay. So I joined the Marine Corps for a two year period of time, so I'd have more options as to what I did while I was there. Served my time in Camp Pendleton, uh, California, as headquarters, company headquarters battalion, and I really never left the base other than going to uh, boot camp and things of that sort. Okay. So, having uh, graduated from high school, I went down to Milwaukee, Wisconsin, the large city in the state, because of better employment opportunities. And one day I was over to my uncle's house. And he asked me if I was going to be in staying in town that weekend. I said, yeah, I have no plans to go, go up north to my hometown of Wausau. Why? He said, my niece did not, this is the last year of high school, my niece did not get invited to the prom this year. I had the corsage and tickets, would you mind taking her to the prom? Well, let's see, this Lutheran boy from 200 miles away, Catholic high school prom, well, I guess I could handle that. So I did that as a favor, and that's where I met my wife. She oh, said she knew instantly that this was the man you were going to marry the first time we met. So That's quite a story. It, it was interesting. It's by divine providence, mm -hmm. pretty much. So we had, after going into the Marine Corps, and she was in nurse's training in Milwaukee, we corresponded for about a year. When I came home on leave, uh, we decided to get married. So I know I decided to get married after one year in the Marine Corps. And that was an interesting saga in our life because uh, we eloped. That was pretty much her idea, but we eloped, left Milwaukee. And on a Friday afternoon, went up to my Wausau, my hometown, with the idea of getting married up in Wausau on that Saturday. Mm -hmm. Well, the state of Wisconsin license requirement had other ideas, so we couldn't ha didn't have enough time to take the blood test, get a declared license, oh, okay. so we couldn't get married. We traveled. From Cal Wisconsin to California, with another couple and two other Marines in the car, drove nonstop about 60 hours. In those days, you didn't have freeways; you had to go down oh, yeah. Highway okay. US 30 okay. and cross the country. We drove nonstop all the way from Wisconsin to California because we had to be back to the base by Monday morning. So we had deadlines. We switched Marine Corps drivers oh. all night long and we kept it going. <laughs> Dropped her off in a hotel in downtown Los Angeles. And then I went on to the base, and she was on her own at age 18. Wow. So, a few months later, we made arrangements to be married. We were married at Camp Pendleton on Marine Corps base. We lived on the base in a trailer house. Wow. That covered, pretty much covers that part of my life. And, um, most of your children didn't get an opportunity to know your parents, so tell us about them. For example, um, oh, you said your father worked at 
a lumber mill, is that right? Right. My father was, uh, name was Burke Andrew. David Andrew was named after him. Okay. For better okay. or worse. <laughs> and uh, he was about 15 years older than my mother, so he sort of robbed the cradle mm -hmm. uh, in that respect. So, um, what crazy. memories did you have as a child then? Well, we had a good time. It was a great place to live, a great time to grow up, because don't forget, this was in the 40s, 1940s. Uh, it was a great era in, uh, in the economy, for one thing, because it was during the war, and then after the war was over, we had to rebuild the country. The boys were coming home from the war, and they had, didn't have any cars. Okay. They hadn't built a car since 1941, until 1946. There were no cars okay. in, under construction during the war. He has to buy cars, refrigerators, buy homes, and it was just a great growth period for that point forward. Okay. But during World War II is an interesting time. This might be of interest. People have heard sure. about rationing books, but they don't realize what a rationing book is. In those days, you could only get cigarettes, so many cigarettes a, a month. You had rationing coupons. Oh, okay. you could and you only used to smoke, right? You're no, smoking. I didn't. Never, okay. never smoked. My okay. dad didn't either. So. My dad would always give his coupons away to someone else. Oh, that was nice. And uh, butter was hard to come by and things like that. You couldn't buy any silk because they used the silk for the parachutes. Oh. So girls wore rayon uh, instead of uh, rayon nylons and with a oh seam up the, back, up the back. And that's what they do was rayon, not silk. In those days, everybody saved everything. Tin cans were squashed and yeah. saved. Everything was saved from World War II. Okay. What about your um, siblings? An older brother, three years older than I am. Okay. And uh, he gave me a very bad time when he was in time when he was 19 years old, and I made a promise to him. And he didn't expect to keep that promise. He said, "Someday you're going to be 87 years old, and I'll only be 84 years old. And I'm going to beat you up." <laughs> Okay. <laughs> he still remembers that. He's now 69, so I got, or 79, so I still have a well to wait. <laughs> okay, so let's let's see. We've talked about the Marine Corps, and um, how about college? By the way, during during the period of time, I might go back to that for a moment. Sure. When they, when my mother made chicken noodle soup, she went out in the yard and got the chicken. Really? Cut the head off the chicken and ran around for a while. Oh my gosh. Put it plonked out, picked the feathers, and then she made chicken noodle soup right from scratch. That's including, really from scratch? Yeah, including making the uh, noodles. Oh by my scratch. gosh. I bet it was great. Yeah. It, I couldn't have asked for a better mother. Oh. You know, because she was a very strong person. And, uh, when my father had his stroke in 1951, uh, he was in the invalid for about three years, the last three years of his life. He was paralyzed right down his right side, right down the center of his nose to his right arm. He'd have to pick up his arm like this and move it over. Oh, wow. So, um, my, my mother lifted him out of the chairs and took good care of him. Wow. Your other question was? Oh, college. Tell us about college. Well, after I got out of the Marine Corps, of course, at that point in life, you have to decide what you're going to do for sure. the rest of your life. Sure. And taking a look at the next 40 years ahead, it was either a four-year struggle through college or a 40-year struggle through life. Right. I thought college would give me a better opportunity. The only problem with that is when you get out of the Marine Corps and go into civilian life with a wife who is already uh, expecting a first child, it's a little bit difficult to start college. My mother had no money. She was a widow. Her parents didn't have any real money. They were renting. Okay. And it was up to me. But the determination I had in backing my wife made it possible. There were um, one or two years of that four-year period of time. We made it through four years of college and four years, working full-time at the same time. And I bought a new house for my wife when she was 24 years old. Wow. Um, while I was in college. So it worked out very well. But as a result, I was a computer programmer and I was able to study on the job for hours at a time. Okay. And after the office at a time. Mm -hmm. Long Beach State College. Okay. Later years, I served on the board of directors there. It's a great, great university. 
10,000 students at that time, you have about 45,000 students today. Mm -hmm. 